Hello and welcome to the section on rational expressions where we talk about complex rational expressions. Complex fractions uh, where we have polynomials and variables all throughout. Look at how ugly that looks. These look like and have been nicknamed the beasts. They're huge. And what's so surprising about this section is that even though these are huge and ugly and big and bad and all that other stuff, these complex fractions, we appeal to that statement before uh, from Richard G. Scott about principles. Those exact same principles that have been, that are very basic to fractions from the earliest part of our math history are what are, will cause these things to simplify so that a child may understand it. Fascinating. In the words of Yoda, Mind what you have learned. Save you again. All right, let's start. So, um, here we simply have a fraction, two fractions added together over two fractions added together. So we break it up. Let's take this top guy and get a common denominator. It looks like it'll be x times y. So times by y times by y times by x times by x. We now have a common denominator. We now have 2y plus 3x over xy. All right, over on the bottom uh, times by y times by x. Uh, that'll be a squared, so that'll times x and x. That'll be 4y squared plus 6x squared over xy. Wow, look at that. Now, if we write this out, 2y plus 3x over xy divided by 4y squared plus 6x squared over xy. Can you see how this just changed, like magically morphed into a problem where you're like, wait a second, we know what to do with that. That becomes 2y plus 3x over xy times xy over the reciprocal over here, 4y squared plus 6x squared. And with multiplication, we just go like this and time straight across. So these xy's cancel and we're left with 2y plus 3x over 4y squared plus 6x squared. Does anything cancel? Can you factor the top? Can you factor the bottom? No. It looks like it will simplify something here, but nothing will be able to be pulled out, so you're stuck. And so really, that's all that happened. We added the fractions on the top, we added the fractions on the bottom, and then it became a division problem. Oh, good. Let's try one more that looks like this. This guy looks even un uglier one. We've got now binomials in the bottom and top. But again, let's see what happens when we just use our fundamental basic principles. The common denominator on the top, well, this guy needs an x plus 3. So let's put that guy on there, x plus 3. And this guy needs an x minus 3. x minus 3. Can you see how the top now has a common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 3? Yeah, so when we just do the top, it becomes over x plus 3, x minus 3. Uh, we get 5x squared plus 15x uh, minus, don't forget that minus 3 jumps in there, minus 3x plus a 9. So this equals on the top 5x squared plus 12x uh, plus a 9. Alrighty then, okay, and oh, that's all over this x plus 3x minus 3. Good deal. Now let's look at what the bottom is. Let's put this big line here. Uh, this guy, uh, we need to factor everything. This guy's not factored yet. x plus 3, x minus 3. Alright, so we know that this is going to be the common denominator. This guy needs an x minus 3 put on there. Let's put it in a different color so we can see what we do here. So this x minus 3 there and there become 4x minus 12 uh, and then plus 12 over this common denominator now of x plus 3 x minus 3. Excellent! So let's put that over here for x, the 12's go away, and x plus 3 x minus 3. And then what happens here? Yeah, we, we write this out as a division problem. So let's return to our color. 
And if it's this divided by, so let's take away that green stuff that we just had there. Yeah, okay. And write it out as divided by 4x over x plus 3, x minus 3. Then when we write it out and flip and multiply, 5x squared plus 12x plus 9 all over x plus 3, x minus 3. And we are now timesing this guy flipped on its head. So the x plus 3, x minus 3 is on the top all over the 4x. That will cancel with that, and that guy will cancel with that. And we're left with 5x squared plus 12x plus 9 all over um, 4x. Now, can the top cancel? Let me see. This would be AC method. 5 times 9 is 45. 5 plus 9 is 14. Let me see what else times is to 45. 15 and 3. Ooh, if that were a minus sign, we could do something here. That's That would be really, really cool. But alas, it is not. So we are stuck. That is our final answer. Now, before we let you try some of these on your own, a couple of these, uh, we're going to show you a slick way of doing it. This is the standard way of doing it. It's using all the common principles we've used in the past. Addition problem, addition problem, division problem, which turns to multiplication. If we write this out one more time, 2 over x plus 3 over y, there is kind of a, a trick that some people find very slick. Uh, plus 6x over y. They look at all of the denominators, so x, y, x, y, and they say, wait a second. We could times the big fraction times top and bottom by the common denominator to everything. And so this x, y would go in here and in there, and then it would jump in here and all the way over to there. So in slow motion, watch what will happen when we do that. So timesing, this is over 1, over 1. So we're timesing the whole big complex fraction by a common denominator on top and bottom. And this is over 1, over 1. So this becomes 2 over x times xy plus 3 over y times xy over 4y over x times xy plus 6x over y times xy. Now people have to be careful. You need to make sure it jumps into both of them and you understand that xy over 1 over xy over 1 is 1. Why this is not changing this fraction at all. And again, this is optional. You can solve it the top way without any problem. But look at what happens in kind of a slick little manner here. The x's cancel and we're left with 2y. The y's cancel and we're left with 3x. And we have no denominators on the top, so that's what's left on the top. Now on the bottom, this x cancels with that x and we're left with 4y squared. And that y cancels with that y and we're left with 6x squared. Kind of a slick little doohickey right there and we ended up with the exact same answer. Let's look at that other guy. 5x over x minus 3 minus 3 over x plus 3 all over 4 over x plus 3 um, plus 12 over x squared minus 9, which is x minus 3, x plus 3. And you can kind of see, you're like, oh, there is a common denominator among all four of them that is x plus 3 times x minus 3. So if you times top and bottom by x plus 3, uh, x minus 3, on the top and the bottom, x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now note we're not timesing top and bottom here by x plus 3, x minus 3, top and bottom here. We're timesing this by x plus 3, x minus 3 over 1, x plus 3, x minus 3 over 1. And so when it jumps into here and jumps into here, and here is a fraction and there is a fraction, it becomes 5x times x plus 3, x minus 3, all over x minus 3 minus 3 times x plus 3 x minus 3 all over x plus 3 kind of doing this in slow motion some of you can kind of see what will cancel when we do this 4 times x plus 3 x minus 3 all over x plus 3 and plus 12 x plus 3 
x minus 3 all over x plus 3, x minus 3. Whew! Now you slash and burn everything that where you have a similarity. Plus 3, plus 3, uh, plus 3, plus 3, and plus 3, x minus 3. So now we see what we have left. We have 5x times x plus 3. So we get 5x squared plus 15x. And over here we get the minus 3 jumps into there and we get minus 3x plus 9. And we have no denominators on the top, so it is gone. And on the bottom we get 4x minus 12 plus 12. And those two go away and you'll see we end up with the exact same answer as what we had before. Some people find this easier, some people find it harder. When we do the boards, we'll just use that top one, but if you'd like to try this slick way, you're certainly welcome to. Okay, give a few a try yourself. To the boards! Here are some for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, write these down, give them a shot, and then press the resume button and you will be able to see how they're worked out. All right, welcome back. So on this one, uh, add the top fractions. What's the common denominator? It'll be x times y. So we're going to times by x and times by x and times by y times by y. So the top becomes x squared minus y squared over xy. And on the bottom, common denominator is xy again, so times by x times by x times by y times by y, and we get x minus y over xy. So our problem is this, x squared minus y squared over xy divided by, and I love this part because this is where it looks like uh, a normal problem again. Instead of being one of these big ugly beasties, this becomes something doable because now it's x squared minus y squared over xy times xy over x minus y. And our instructions here are factor everything. And the only thing that isn't already factored is this guy, which breaks up into, that's a difference of squares, x minus y, x plus y over xy times xy over x minus y. And look at what cancels. The x cancels. The y cancels. The x minus y cancels. And we are left with, yep, this whole thing settles down to x plus y over 1. Wow, what a cool problem. The next one uh, made this guy up. First of all, let's uh, factor everything so we can add these fractions together. And this is x plus 2 x plus 7. Oh, I was hoping that would happen. So we've got common denominators here. So on the top, adding these fractions, this guy needs an x plus 7. Uh, and this guy needs an x plus 7. There we go. And this guy's going to need an x plus 2. And yep, better put parentheses around that because that whole thing's times in that whole thing. And this guy, x plus 2. All right, so on the top we have 3x plus 21. That's this 3 jumping into that x plus 7. Minus 5x minus 10. Make sure you've got that minus 10 up there. Over x plus 7 times x plus 2. You might be tempted to just jump the 5 in and forget that the minus sign would still have to subtract everything on the top. So it would subtract the 5x and the 10. Over what's on the bottom here. A uh, common denominator is x plus 2 times x plus 7. So this guy needs to be times by x plus 2. And this is x plus 2 here. And so we get 4x plus 8 um, plus, this guy already has a common denominator, so 1 all over x plus 7, x plus 2. All right, let's see how that breaks down into a nice problem when we have it down here. This is 3x minus 5x is a negative 2x plus 21 minus 10 is positive 11 over x plus 7 times x plus 2. And instead of a big fraction bar, let's write the division sign, which is indeed a fraction bar with this guy on the top and the other guy on the bottom. And we get 4x plus 9 over x plus 7 times x plus 2. 
And division problems, as they are wont to do, become multiplication problems, which makes it nice. x plus 7 uh, times x plus 2. And times that by... Um, this guy flipped on its head. x plus 7, x plus 2, over 4x plus 9. Cancel, 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 cancel. Well, divide to 1, and we're left with negative 2x plus 11 over 4x plus 9. And there we have it. And there are just problems like this where using all the principles that you've learned about adding fractions and dividing fractions and common denominators will cause these problems to fall apart before your very eyes. It just takes a little while. All right, good luck with the homework.